interoperability is certainly not a new problem uh, in the space of, of blockchain right now, technology. Uh, interoperability is incredibly important, but with the advent of the internet, interoperability was also a problem that needed to be solved. And the way I define it is interoperability is the ability for different systems to exchange and have meaning with different uh, sources of information. And so with omnichain interoperability and specifically how we constructed layer zero, we set out to enable communication between smart contracts on different chains and uh, essentially arbitrary contract invocation with the bytes array. So the ability to send packets of information between contracts on a uh, disparate system. Michael, uh, when when you think of identity or interoperability, like what comes to mind, either technical definition or just random thoughts that popped in your head, in your mind? I guess I'll take the concept of identity here, although they are very sort of interrelated. I think of, um, you know, an identity is sort of the account or the let's say it's a key pair or whatever you, you can imagine it to be something that enables a user to have sovereignty over some account. But, you know, identity is useful in the context of a system, right? And so um, you can think of, you have a decentralized identity on Ethereum and it gives you capabilities and permissions within the Ethereum ecosystem. And likewise, you might have accounts and identities in different networks that give you permissions in those networks. Um, but when I think about the intersection of identity and interoperability, um, I think of sort of asking that question of like, how do we integrate identities across disparate systems? Like, how do I, you know, how can I represent the same actor on system A and B and sort of provide that unified user experience? So I don't feel the silos between like Ethereum and Solana, for example. Um, it sort of feels like one unified web. How can we build these standards? Uh, when you look at Web2, there are standards, even if you look at phone carriers and understanding an iPhone, uh, iPhone, et cetera. So Irene, how, how do you see us building the standards? Like who will be building these standards for Web3 and also linking it to Web2? Uh, and how will, will, will they do it? Yeah, I we at Layer Zero have built certain omnichain standards uh, based on the experiences of developers that have reached out with really urgent problems that they've run into. So for example, there were many well-funded games and NFT projects that were built within the Terra Luna ecosystem. And after that entire ecosystem collapsed overnight, many of these projects were essentially stranded. They had bet the success of their project on one chain, which for a long time was the way that we built projects. We chose one chain, say Solana, and built a DEX there, and it was a Solana-based DEX. Or we chose Polygon and built a game there, and it was a Polygon-based game. Uh, but how would you future-proof a project that is dependent on a single chain and its creator company for its liveness? And uh, that essentially led us to creating the OFT and ONFT standards, Omnichain Fungible Token and Omnichain Non-Fungible Token, which are ways to uh, launch tokens that natively exist on multiple chains or to uh, convert single chain NFTs or fungible tokens into omni-chain ones or ones that can seamlessly transfer between chains. And you ask who should be making these, I think developers should be making them uh, and there should be working groups. So in our case, when we were creating these, there was a small uh, contingent of, of developers that we went back to time and time again for their feedback. And uh, then when we published these as open source GitHub repos, there were grassroots teams that started experimenting with them and that informed version two of, of many of these standards. Right now, we're part of the working group for ERC 6551. And uh, it's been really cool to see disparate uh, engineering functions from different groups come together and actually create some coordinated product effort. Uh, I think it's across like six different teams right now. Super cool. Uh, Michael, if you want to reply to this, do, do you agree on, on the take um, that it's like mainly developers that are behind these standards? You know, when we talk about the Web3 uh, ecosystem, we usually say it's kind of fragmented. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, of course, I don't want to minimize what you said, Irene, because it's not just developers, but you put them at the forefront. Uh, Michael, do you see other people, designers, creators, or you think that really when it comes to this part, it should be the developers that, that push the standards forward. 
Yeah, that's an interesting distinction. I mean, I, I guess I, I wouldn't have thought to split the persona so specifically of like a developer, I think sort of in the context of um, ceramic and, and Web3 generally, I think I would agree in this case with Irene that like in terms of the standards that will facilitate interoperability of a certain type of asset or a certain type of piece of data or, or, or other form of information, um, it, it does feel like uh, those that are closest to the products they're building are closest to like the use cases that need to be defined. And so in the case of ceramic, you know, we achieve interoperability um, of non-financial assets or attributes, right? So you could think of things like profiles or tweets or comments or likes. And so, you know, forming not financial protocols like or asset protocols like might exist on blockchains, but more like data protocols that facilitate data exchange and interop between different services or, or apps. And so for us, interoperability standards are based on schemas, right? So it's like, can two applications structure the same data schema? And that allows their two systems to sort of interoperate. And so for us, the atomic unit of composability or interoperability is the schema. And I think the equivalent equivalent to a schema in like traditional blockchain land um, are these like ERCs or, or like omni-chain standards that define, you know, uh, fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, like uh, smart contract protocols. I think where Michael and I align uh, based off of our experiences building these two different protocols is also that our end users are developers and uh, who is in, who's inheriting these standards and building with them? Developers, not end users. End users uh, are, are there to enjoy the abstracted experience. Um, and I, I also think that uh, with these different standards, they should be very much informed by user research. And it's something that I wanna see more of in our entire space. It's a best practice of web two software development. You should interview users, actually have empathy for their um, their perspective on engaging with your product. And I think across many of the, the orgs I've engaged with in our industry, it still isn't a, a necessary component of building product within crypto uh, that's or treated like a necessary component, but it should be. No, that's a great point when it comes to kind of user experience. And I want to have both of your take on this. Like, there's a great KPI actually more from Web2, which is a customer effort score and NPS, which is net promoter score. And basically what it is at its core is, would you recommend it to your friends and family? And how easy is it to use? And when you look at the Web3 ecosystem, generally speaking, there are a lot of products or protocols that are the number one and that everyone is using, but there's a big distinction between their number one for the right reasons, right? Like, would you recommend this specific protocol or this way to preserve your keys, right? So when it comes to kind of user experience, and I, I want to bring in the back to interoperability and identity, but how do you think we can push the conversation forward and push the standards, but at the same time, make them accessible to the general public? But, or maybe they should not be, at least on this part. Maybe it's something very technical, and then we can simplify it later. But first, we need to define them. There was a, a question that you had sent us beforehand, or a quote, uh, which is fun is the killer feature. Uh, and the question is like, when you're building infrastructure is fun needed. And it reminded me of a conversation I had with a friend recently about uh, the process of Michelangelo building David. Uh, I studied a bit of, of art history and art philosophy in university. And one thing I was very fixated on through uh, studying Michelangelo's process was that he built David by removing the ugly, not by pursuing beauty. And uh, the result was, was David. And uh, I think how you achieve fun and delight uh, is by, uh, at least from our perspective, or our contribution is building infrastructure that abstracts away complexity so that fun can exist. Uh, I come originally from a consumer background. I'm, uh, I study computer science and joined Layer Zero originally as an engineer. Uh, but when you're building consumer products, it's all about delight, delighting the end user. And uh, the most delightful products I've ever used were actually just uh, fully ab abstracted experiences that were, were quite elegant. And uh, I, I think 
from a product perspective of it more as what was removed, not what was was added. Michael, do you, do you want to respond to this? Yeah, I love that. Um, I, I also sort of agree that in developer tooling, like it does feel that the more you try to do to it or the more you try to add to it, um, the less effective it is. And so it is sort of like, I think art and delight or fun by the removal of like impediments and just like, let me do the thing I want to do with as little friction as possible. I feel like we have the opportunity though to web three specifically. Like when I, when I think of the ethos of web three and like what attracts people to the space, let's call it in. And, and I would say one of the things that most commonly comes up is community, right? Like I think at the end of the day, Thank you.